Hello, my name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle, and this is part two of our introduction to particle illusion, where we're going to start to make significant changes to our presets, and we're going to end up with a particle system that I've used in this motion background here. Now, we're not going to dilly-dally in this second part. We're going to come straight into the particle effects interface. And you'll see that the last emitter we had selected will play automatically for us in our viewer here. Uh, with this one, I'm going to find a tunnel, and we have lots of different types of tunnels, whether you want a, a lovely little heart-shaped tunnel for more romantic times of the year, or we want a space world tunnel, or something electric, or some cartoony warp lines. Let's try and find a tunnel that's going to work for us, because the type of tunnel I want is going to move when we start to drag it around, a little bit like this one. But if we do the same thing with the energy vortex, this one attaches the emitter in a different way. So it's not going to give us the effect we're looking for. Um, and in this case, I'm going to just go with a basic soft tunnel. I think this is going to look quite nice. And as before, I'm just going to double click to apply it onto the stage. And once it's there, let's come to the edit layout and play this one back so we can see what's happening. Okay, and to begin with, we're going to do a similar sort of thing as we did before. We're going to change up the size or we could even change up the zoom. And again, in this case, these two things will have a similar effect. So when I've got something that's looking quite tunnel-y, which I am now, it's filling up the screen, I want to come and change the color. Uh, well, let's, let's do the same things we did previously though. Let's come into properties, because I want to change the frames to preload, and I'm gonna bring that up again until we have our tunnel filling in the area there. There we go. But this also shows us something else. This also shows us our tint color. So if I change our tint color here, say from um, orange to a magenta, we can see it's tinted our tunnel a little bit more magenta. Now, not all of the colors are the same color. Now, why is that? Let's take a little look down at one of our other properties on our emitter, and this is tint strength. So what tint strength is going to do is it's gonna change how much tint color is added to our original color. Now, at this moment, you're saying Ben, you said this tint color is changing how it mixes back to our original color. But what is our original color? Well, this is where we sort of dive a little bit deeper down into the hierarchy of the particle. So we've got our layer, which is where we store all of the emitters. So this is the point shape that is actually giving birth to all of these uh, particles. And these particles are down here at the bottom of the emitter. And we have one particle shape being emitted, as we do with a soft tunnel. Okay, but if we go down to one of the other ones here, I'm going to take my wormhole new. We can see that we have actually three particles coming out of this one emitter. So let's, let's uh, just hide my soft tunnel for a second and play our wormhole new and see what's going on here. Okay, so when we have an emitter with multiple particles, this means that these properties are even more important. So if I wanted to change the color of all of this, for example, to green, so hit green here and I'll turn up my tint strength, you'll see that that actually affects all of my three particles. So I spin that around. If on the other hand, I wanted to, hang on a sec, let's just stop that there. If on the other hand, I only wanted to change the, uh, the ring, I would come into the ring, come into the properties here, go down to my colors, and I can change my ring property to just green on this one. Hit apply. And you'll see that only the ring has its colors changed, whereas all the other particles maintain their original color. And we'll get a bit deeper into that as we go along. Uh, but for now, let's just stop that. Uh, and let's just delete our wormhole new and show our soft tunnel once again. So different presets come with different layers of complexity. But the overriding idea is that the particles are always down at the bottom. And if I open my particles up, we have a lot more stuff to show here. Oh, okay. Don't worry, this can be a little bit overwhelming in the start, but we'll deal with things as we need to. Right now, we don't need to. All I'm gonna do is open up properties of this particle, the sparkle particle. And it's here where I can change things like the color and the alpha. So if I open up my colors here, you can see my colors are being driven by this gradient. And if I click on this gradient, we get a little 
gradient editor. And the gradient editor is where we can edit our gradient. Makes sense. So if I wanted to change the birth color of these from this greeny blue gray, I can just double click on the swatch and this will open up my regular color picker. Uh, and if I want to make this something a little bit brighter, maybe, maybe a little bit greener. So we're starting to get a little bit of green right at the, at the start there. So let's change this swatch as well. Uh, let's change this one from green to maybe a slightly brighter yellowy orange. Let's go with orange, actually. You can see how the colors are moving from the birth color to its midlife crisis color of yellow and over to its old age color of first cyan and then black. And I can change these up just by moving these around as well. I can, of course, add new colors just by clicking in the middle somewhere here. And this will give me a choice of what to change this to. Maybe an orange or maybe, or maybe just coming back to a different type of cyan there. And all of these are very interactive. So we can just click and be dragging around and seeing what effect they make. We hit apply on that. And we can do the same with the alpha channel as well. And you can see we have different stops for how transparent or opaque those areas are. So we can choose our colors up here and then we can just use the tint color just to mix that back till we find something that we really like. Something around about there, I like that. Okay, let's close up our properties here so we don't have to look at those anymore. And let's look at some, what some of these properties do down here and how they relate to the properties in the emitter. Because a lot of these properties have exactly the same name and they seem to do exactly the same thing, except when they don't. I'm looking at the spin at the top, so spin in the emitter. Our spin in the emitter is currently set to 98.5. Why is it set to 98.5? Well, that's what the value was in the preset. But if I increase this, our particles are spinning wildly. Why is that? Hang on, let's just uh, bring this back to about 100 so they're not spinning quite as wildly. Now, they're spinning wildly because it's working as a percentage of the particle's own values. Let's just stop that for a second because I'm actually starting to get a little bit hypnotized by it. I just want to stay on the uh, a single frame here so we can see what's actually happening. So each particle is born with certain values here. But these values are only one part of the puzzle. The other part happens up at the top here in the emitter. And the emitter properties tell us how much, as a percentage, that these values are going to affect the actual image that we see in the viewer. So in the emitter, if we have a spin of 100, it means we're going to be using the spin value of the particles as they're born. Now you're looking at this, you're seeing a value of zero, and you're wondering, why is this still spinning around? Well, because the life of a particle is a complicated one, because every particle born can be different. And that difference is shown by this variation down here. If we look down the spin variation, we have a value of 16, which means that the particle's value can vary with a value of 16 compared to its original value here. If I set this also to zero, so we have no spin, no variation, and I play that through, all of a sudden we get a very different effect. If I have a spin, but no variation, again, we have a very different effect. I bring that up. And if I come up to the emitter, and I take a look at our spin, and I take the spin down on the emitter here, down to 50, this has only given us 50% of this spin value, which is 12. And if I bring this all the way up, then this is spinning it around a lot faster. That's uh, too fast, too fast, Ben. Come on, let's bring this back down to 100. So it's gonna be the combination of these three things that's actually going to affect how our particles are looking. And in this case, I want a bit of variation, quite a bit of variation, actually. So now we have our particles spinning. Every particle is gonna spin a little bit, but the spin variation is also quite high. So some particles are going to be spinning faster than others. Now think back to your own life. How fast were you spinning when you were born? How fast were you spinning when you were a teenager? How fast are you going to be spinning when you're into old age? I might not be able to map a particle's lifetime exactly over to yours, but just like yours, a particle's life isn't exactly the same from the moment it's born to the moment it dies. 
we also have another parameter we can change, which is over life. And we're going to look at spin over life in this case here. Again, I'm going to just stop the frame because I'm getting hypnotized by it. Now, this spin over life also has a timeline, just as we do up here. But these two aren't connected because the viewer's timeline is showing us what's happening in the life of the effect, in the life of the entire particle simulation as we've, we've got it here. Whereas this bottom one, when we have the over life value selected, is showing us how these particle values change over the lifetime of the particles, from when it's born to when it dies. Born over on the left at zero, dies over on the right at one. And at the moment, you can see our line here is completely straight, which means that this spin value is going to be the same all the way through the particle's life. Now I'm going to change this up. I'm going to drag this down till we hit zero at the start. And I'm going to play this through. And what this means now, if I just sort of drag this through a little bit here, is that particles at the start of their life spin slower than they do towards the end of their life. And we can, we can change this up even more. Let's come over to the start of our over life here, and I can just type in zero into our value. And I can change the type of keyframe that I'm using. Instead of having a linear, I'm going to choose a Bezier. And I'm going to just interactively, right on here, right in the timeline, just change how these are working. I can do the same over at the end here as well. I can come over and change this to Bezier. And what this shape means is that our particles at the start of their life into middle age is going to be a very, very slow spin. And then as it approaches death, it's going to spin faster and faster. So let's play that through. And you can see that happening. At the start, the start is very static and it gets towards the outer areas here. It starts to spin more and more. And if I bring this up, you see those values are changing a lot further in or a lot closer into the tunnel there. Cool. And we're driving a few particles here. Let's turn uh, motion blur on on this one as well. Looking kind of nice. Let's hit apply on that to bring us back into After Effects. There we go. That's looking, uh, it's looking kind of cool. I think it'd be a little bit more interesting though. Let's launch Particle Illusion one more time. I'm going to close up my soft tunnel. And let's find something else that we can add into this. And let's actually add a, uh, an energy vortex in as well. So I'm just going to double click in here. As we've seen before, that just adds a secondary emitter into my layer. Uh, and let's just bring this size down just a little bit there. Just around about there, that's kind of nice. So I've got my energy vortex and I've got my soft tunnel. If I want my energy vortex underneath my soft tunnel, I just click on the little hamburger menu and go move down. And then that will position my energy tunnel underneath there. And just to add a little bit of motion to this, I'm going to come into my transforms and I'm going to choose world plus emitter. So that gives us two different ways of offsetting this. Now, something to note, the animation of the emitter can be done directly in the particle illusion interface. What we're doing here is just simply adding a quick offset in the host application. We have the world transform the emitter offset. We're going to look at that in just a moment. And I'm just going to wiggle both of these. So I'm just going to alt or option click and I'm just going to go wiggle. Uh, 0.3 comma 150 on the world and I'm going to on the emitter offset I'm going to alt or option click on that and just go wiggle 0.2 uh, 500 Let's see what that's going to look like so I'm just randomizing the position of the uh, the world and the emitter and let's just play that through there we go. So we're starting to travel down this sort of weird, magical, spaceshipy vortex thing. I like the idea of this. We can obviously work a bit more on this to get it looking really good later. But this second section has actually gone through quite a lot of sort of more complicated ideas. We start to see that gap between the emitter and the particle. When it comes to color, we can use the tint in the emitter to add an overall color tint to the particles or we can go into the particles itself and go into the properties of the particle itself and change that color gradient. 
And in the same way, we have those other properties available to us, like the number, the life, the spin, the zoom. All of those are available both at the emitter level and at the particle level. So changing things at a particle level is just like changing one person in a crowd. We can change how big they are. We can change how long they live. And we can change that property over their lifetime as well. But changing things at the emitter level means we change the entire crowd. So we can shorten all the particles' lives or we can make all the particles bigger. But that's always based off of the original value that that particle has. Please join me in part three of this tutorial where we start to look at the motion tracking and masking that we can do with the built in version of Mocha straight within Particle Illusion. Thanks for watching and be sure to go to borisfx.com to download a free trial of Continuum Complete where you'll find Particle Illusion. Also, subscribe to the Boris YouTube channel by clicking on the link above to stay up to date with the latest information and training materials on all the Boris Effects products.